Hi, I'm Aaron Mitchell, the assistant pastor at Berean Baptist Church, and my second point on how to have an answer for a Jehovah's Witness, a Mormon, a Muslim, all those that uh, do not believe that God is a triune or Trinitarian God. Um, let's begin in Colossians, which is a, um, a very uh, doctrinally sound book. I want to read one verse for you out of Colossians chapter 1, verse number 16. Speaking about Jesus, we read in verse 15, he was the firstborn of every creature. But verse 16 says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. All things were created by him and for him. Now, Jesus is not God's architect. And the Jehovah's Witness like to put the role of a foreman on Jesus Christ. They like to say that God created Jesus, then they allowed Jesus to, then God allowed Jesus to create everything else. So he's actually doing what God wanted him to do. Listen, the Bible says that Everything was created by him and for him in Colossians chapter number one, verse number 16. Now, this has become a very uh, difficult topic to confront many of the Jehovah's Witness. Always remember, you want to try to do it in a loving manner if you can at first. You always want to try to present them with why you have the hope that you have from God's word. Why you have um, a desire to love and why you have a desire for them to, to be in eternity with you and how you don't need to work to get there. See, unfortunately, many of the Jehovah's Witness, they base works on part of their salvation. They actually believe they're helping God save them. And that makes no sense of all because uh, nothing's impossible with God. He does all the saving all the time from start to finish. We're going to see that tonight. Um, but I want you to know something because... What used to be a really easy topic to nail them on, they've been prepared by the Watchtower and Tract Society very well. But here's the problem. The word of God is settled forever, and it's also settled forever in heaven. So unless we no longer have our King James Bible, and if we no longer have the word of God before us, well, then maybe they may have a shot to deceive in many. But I want you to notice in John chapter 1, John chapter 1. This used to be what many uh, Baptists and many Christians for many years would call their slam dunk that Jesus is God. But because they've pulled Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 and, and 16 to say Jesus was created and there was a time that Jesus had a beginning, then he's not God. Because we used to be able to come directly to verse number 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was the life, and the life was the light of men. I want to skip down just a little bit. Verse number 8 or 9. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. Who? Jesus. And the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe upon his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This used to be the slam dunk that many Christians could go to in their King James Bible. But unfortunately, because of many of the corrupt versions of the word of God that have been circulating, this is no longer the coup de gras strong passage um, for defense that many evangelicals or many other believers today no longer have. You know, the sneakiest thing the devil ever did was take our sword away from us, the word of God. Um, he replaced it with a butter knife. And that's what I consider many of the 
new versions of the Bible to be. Nothing but a butter knife. Look, give me an old 1611 battle sword. I'm going to take a two-edged sword into a battle. I'm not going to take a butter knife. I'm not going to take your little steak knife. I'm not bringing a knife to a gunfight. I'm bringing a sword. I'm bringing a sword. And you say, well, okay, so where's the big discrepancy? Number one, many, if not all, of the new versions say was with God and the word was God. In many of the versions, if not all of them, and it says the word was a God. And that's totally taken away the deity of Jesus Christ as God. Because we know that God created everything. That's what it says. Now, at first glance, many people would look at this and say, boy, that's an awful lot to read. It's always important to put it in context. Because these passages in our New Testament we're going to find them in the Old Testament as well. Turn in your Bible to Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. Isaiah chapter 45. Probably help if I marked them. <clears throat> Isaiah 45. Now this is really important because the word Lord in the Old Testament, this is what many people would or this is what is called the Tetragrammaton. This is L-O-R-D, all capital, all capital. So this is where Jehovah's Witness believe that the name Lord is actually Jehovah, okay? Now, number one, in the Hebrew, there were 22 consonants, and they read from right to left. So who's the one who decided what con consonants go in there? Now, this is not the point, but my point is, they believe the Lord is Jehovah. Okay, let's read verse number five. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. Get this. I form the light. Jesus is the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And create darkness. Create darkness. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation. And let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Be careful when you strive with God. Now skip down to verse number 18 because this is kind of the nail in the coffin here. Because if you're going to say in the Old Testament... The Lord God is Jehovah. Get ready for verse number 18. Because the Bible says, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens. Wait a minute. I thought Jesus created the heavens as the foreman. Well, the prophet Isaiah, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, calls the Lord the creator of the heavens. Well, maybe God, this is, this is the heavens up in where his throne is. Oh, okay. God himself, in verse number 18, that formed the earth and made it. Uh-oh. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. Well, who did? I am the Lord. There is none else. I have spoken it in a dark, I have not spoken it in a secret. In a dark place of the earth, I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come draw near together, that ye are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save him. Tell ye and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me 
and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. In the book of John chapter number 3, the Bible says, And I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Verse 22 says, Look unto me and be ye saved. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. I have about a hundred more passages in the Old Testament. And this is supposed to be a quick video. But let me tell you something right now. Jesus is God. Amen.